as endangered, saying the numbers reported by the government are inflated. To tell us more, we're joined by Deborah Tabarth, the chair of the Australian Koala Foundation. Deborah, good morning. Great to see you again. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. What is the situation in Victoria regarding koalas? Well, Victorian government is notorious at sort of plucking figures out of the air. And in 2011, in a Senate inquiry, they did miss out in a listing across the whole nation. Uh, Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria um, and ACT got a vulnerable listing under the EPBC Act. But the Victorian government argued, please don't do this to us. We've got a logging industry. We don't want you to list it. And that was 2012. So 12 years later, um, I believe the plight of the koala is worse and it was upgraded to endangered. So in 12 years, it, things got worse. And um, I just believe that every single koala in Australia needs protection and that's why I want a Koala Protection Act. OK. Uh, so what, what, what uh, as far as you know, is stopping the Victorian government from doing this? Oh, I think they're captive to industry and I think they are so... Look, in the fur trade between 1890 and, and 1930, We've got the manifest of eight million skins that went to market in New York and London. So the koala was basically shot almost to extinction in Victoria and was extinction in South Australia. So then everybody got the panics and put koalas everywhere. So the Victorian government is obsessed about koalas killing trees. And the joke is it's because only 3% of the original vegetation is left in Western Victoria. So there's a sort of a, a feeling in the department that the koalas are like tree rats. They'll often call them that. So I'm just sick of it. Um, and the joke is when you have to get a, an animal listed, you actually have to count dead bodies. So over my 36-year career, all I've done is count dead bodies. And now the CSIRO have got $10 million to count koalas and their, you know, final date is 2032. And I'm arguing this is an endangered species. I don't believe our federal government is taking any of this seriously enough. And I think we actually put out a thing today. If there's 400,000 koalas in Victoria, they're probably on the tram. So watch out. You know, I'm just so tired of it. Mm. Counting in, instead of protecting the habitats, that's the key. Now, uh, koalas are listed as endangered formally, as you say, New South Wales, the ACT in Queensland. Has that measurably led to, uh, from what you've seen in terms of studies, uh, preservation of koalas, or at least stopping of uh, a, a decline in their numbers? Well, I'm notorious for driving bureaucrats nuts over my career, so I do regularly contact the, um, the recovery team and I think they're glacial in their attitude. All they want to do is keep reporting, reporting. I do see nothing that says koalas are safe and there are carers and, and activists all over the country who feed information to me. I do not believe one tree is safe in our country right now with a recovery plan. And if you're as charismatic as the koalas and you can't get the government's attention on that, then goodness me, what happens to the other creatures? It's just shocking. Yeah. Deborah, thank you. If I happen to come across a koala on my tram ride home in Melbourne, I'll say hi to it for you. Check out our Instagram, Michael. You'll see a gorgeous picture. I'll do that right now. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, bye.